He's saying, today, now, though you are in hell, we will be together in the paradise of the Garden of Eden. To understand what hell is, you need to understand what paradise is, or the garden, as it talks about in the book of Genesis. You see, whatever, whatever you think about whether the garden is literal or not, it's not important in this sense that it's a picture of a beautiful paradise connection between a loving creator God and his creation. And these humans are in interaction with God. Adam and Eve are in interaction with God. And it's beautiful. And they have options in this garden. There's the tree of life and there's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now they're kind of mysterious, these trees. They're not unpacked in great detail, but they're clearly very different. And the tree of life is something beautiful. And it's not that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil appears to be something disastrous, but God says, don't eat from that. The fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is attractive to the eyes, good for food, and expands one's life for wisdom. And what happens is Eve becomes focused on this fruit and sees that it's beautiful, that it provides energy for life, food, sustenance, and it expands your understanding. It's self-satisfying. It's self-fulfilling. And it's self-contained. It's like when you have this fruit, you have everything you need. And here's the thing. Eve and Adam become so focused on this fruit and eat from this fruit to the exclusion of the tree of life. That's the picture. The dream of being self-contained and self-sufficient is put in front of them and they choose it. The thing is, that dream becomes a nightmare because it has consequences that if you move away from the source the loving source of life, then whatever you think you have and however beautiful it looks and whatever dreams it promises you, it cannot sustain them. It's a delusion. It's described as Eve becoming deceived in taking it. And the loving creator says, if you eat of this fruit, you will die. He doesn't say, if you eat of this fruit, I will kill you. There is a murderer on the scene. He's in the background. He's helped them. He's encouraged them to focus on this tree. But his story is for another time. They take this fruit. And death is now inevitable, no matter how much good, no matter, no matter how many seemingly beautiful things happen in the end, they've just severed themselves from the source. It's like they've forgotten the source and they've forgotten they've forgotten. And they are expelled from the garden which is an inevitable consequence because you cannot have self-sufficiency and the loving source sustaining you. 
So they exit the garden. And in exiting the garden, they're beginning their journey into what we will call hell. That is, they're moving away from the source, from the loving source of life. And life and reality will crumble around you. If we fast forward to Jesus of Nazareth dying on a cross and he has two criminals either side of him also dying with him. They're a picture for us. One of them is angry and mocks Jesus and mocks life and mocks everyone around him. He's fighting his death and the consequences of his lifestyle. And he goes into his death angry and fighting and shouting. The other one is totally different. He recognises his death on a cross is a consequence of his lifestyle. That he's not just a victim of his upbringing, but his choices have also moulded this consequence now. And he sees that. And he contrasts that with the life of Jesus of Nazareth, who's dying on a cross next to him and says, I deserve this consequence. You don't deserve this consequence. And he sees the power that's within this Jesus of Nazareth. He sees the power, the love, the presence of this Jesus of Nazareth. And we haven't seen any of his journey of how he's heard of him before, but here he is going, I know something of you. And he turns to him and says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And now here's a man who deserves his hell that he's in, that he's experiencing, and that he may continue to experience. And Jesus says to him, today, You will be with me in paradise. He's saying, today, now, though you are in hell, we will be together in the paradise of the Garden of Eden. It seems something has gone on in this man where his eyes have opened from the delusion that he can produce fullness in his own life and is looking to the source of life and says, I no longer want to forget you. I want to remember you. I want to remember that there's a source of life. Can I come back? Jesus says, yes. You see, hell is the life that we choose of self-sufficiency that the wisdom of the scriptures is saying will always crumble around you. And Jesus said this, that he came to seek, to find, to seek those outside of the garden whose lives were destroyed, and to rescue them, to bring them back to the garden, to bring them back to paradise. The garden is telling us that hell is what we choose, and paradise is coming back to the source of life and starting to live your life increasingly from the resources of a loving God in every aspect, attitude, movement of your life till that grows and grows and becomes a garden within and even without you. So no matter what consequences going on on the, go on on the outside, Your life is springing from the source of life 
himself. I want to thank the sponsors of this video, my Patreon supporters, those who've donated, that enable these videos to be made. I deeply appreciate this, and I hope you'll hit subscribe and like so this content goes out to more people.